The Asterisk 2 has kept the title of being one of the best multiple launch rocket systems, MLRS for short, for 40 years. It is indeed a splendid achievement for the Brazilian defense industry. This MLRS has proved its combat value in many wars. As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the Asterisk 2, the first modular artillery rocket system. The Asterisk 2 takes its name from the acronym for Artillery Saturation Rocket System. It also means stars in Portuguese. By constantly evolving according to the modern battlefield requirements, this 40-year MLRS is among the best. In the 1970s, Argentina's initiation of the Kundor program with German and Italian technical assistance to develop long-range rockets caused the Brazilian army to determine a similar requirement. Yet, the program progressed slowly. This situation changed in 1981 when Iraq decided to fund the project. This country needed a new MLRS, which would have better range and accuracy than the BM-21 in its war against Iran. Later, Libya also decided to finance the project, especially for the long-range artillery rocket development phase. The first version of the MLRS, called Asterisk 2, was mounted on a Brazilian licensed production variant of the 6x2 Mercedes-Benz L2013 truck. After the first trials, the producer Avibras decided to move on with the Mercedes-Benz 2028 based 6x6 Tektron VBT 2028 all-terrain vehicle to improve mobility. It also armored the cabin to increase survivability. The Asterisk 2 was officially presented in 1982 and serial production began one year later. Many sources claim that 1983 was also the year that Asterisk 2 entered the service of the Brazilian army. It is partly true. Brasilia acquired the early examples of the MLRS for evaluation purposes. The army waited for its first operational Asterisk 2s until the early 1990s. The first user of the MLRS was Iraq. This country also produced Asterisk 2 under license. The early variants are based on the 6x6 Tektron VBT 2028 all-terrain vehicle, which offers good cross-country mobility. The cabin is lightly armored, and it can resist only non-armor piercing small arms rounds, shell splinters coming from at least 100 meters distance, and the explosion of anti-personnel mines. A typical Asterisk 2 battery comprises 6 firing units and 6 ammunition resupply vehicles. Since it can launch different calibers of artillery rockets, the firing unit is called the Universal Multiple Rocket Launcher or AV-LMU. The ammunition resupply vehicle, AV-RMD, can carry up to two complete reloads and has an onboard crate. The radar fire control vehicle, AV-UCF, was optional when the Asterisk 2 was initially marketed. However, it is now a standard integrated part of the battery composition. The battery also contains one AV PCC command vehicle, one or two AV OFVE field repair workshop vehicles, and one AV MET mobile weather station vehicle. The battalion level headquarters provide coordination and fire control direction for up to three batteries. Except for the 4x4 AV PCC and AV MET, all vehicles are in a 6x6 configuration and all have suitable size and weight to be transported by a C-130 Hercules or a C-390 Millennium. All launching procedures are controlled via a fire control computer located inside the launcher vehicle. But the Asterisk 2 do not have an automatic laying capability. The launcher can manually be elevated and traversed via hydraulic lever backups. The 7mm SS-09TS has a range of 10 km. It was developed for training purposes. While the 42 launcher of the SS-09TS is reusable, all other caliber rockets have disposable containers. The 127mm SS-30 with 30 km range has a kill zone radius of 57 meters. An Asterisk 2 can carry and launch 32 of them. The 180mm SS-40 can reach a distance of 40 km. Besides one with a high explosive warhead, 
It has a variant which carries 27mm dual effect anti-armor anti-personnel bomblets with electronic timer fuse. The SS-40s are fired from a 16 tube launcher. The 300mm SS-60 with 60km range also has high explosive and cargo warhead options. The second one carries 65 7mm bomblets. The SS-60s are fired from a 4 tube launcher like the SS-80 rockets. The 300mm SS-80 has a range of 90 km. It can carry only 52 7mm bomblets. In 1991, Avibras introduced a new rocket variant with cargo and high explosive incendiary warheads. The cargo type can deploy different kinds of mines. The anti personnel mines of the rocket have an effective radius of 30 meters. The anti material mines can penetrate more than 100 millimeters of armor, which is 120 millimeters for anti armor mines. Also, this rocket can deploy heavy TNT-filled delayed action fused submunitions capable of penetrating more than 400 mm of reinforced concrete for airfield denial missions. The modernized Mark III M variant of the Astris II can fire GPS-guided SS-40G and SS-80G rockets. They have a range of 33 and 90 km respectively. Avibras delivered the first improved Astris II Mark VI in 2014. This version, also known as Astros 2020, is based on the 6x6 Tatra T815 79OR39 truck with the 402 horsepower Tatra T3C92890 Euro 3 diesel engine, which provides a maximum road speed of 110 km per hour. It has several other basic improvements, including an improved armored cabin modern digital communications and navigation systems. Also, the Astros 2020 can launch the new guided rockets and missiles which are currently under development. One of them, the SS-150, is a 450mm GPS guided rocket with a 150km range. The AVTM-300 cruise missile has a range of 300km. Avibras is also working on the fiber optics guided FOG MPM multi purpose missile, which will be effective against tanks, fortifications, and helicopters. Its range is 20 km. The AV UCF radar fire control vehicle of the Astros 2020 has new advanced radar. Also, the AV PCC command and AV MET mobile weather station vehicles in the battalion composition are based on the 4x4 Tatra T815-7A-0R-59 truck. Due to financial problems, the previous Astros 3 variant based on 8x8 Mercedes-Benz Ectros truck has been suspended since 1999. Brazil is also considering the air defense variant of the Astros 2 called the AVMM with the CAMM missiles of the MBDA. Angola, Brazil, Indonesia, Iraq, Libya, Malaysia, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia are the current users of the Astros family MLRS. Even though many sources mentioned Bahrain as a user, we could not find any visual confirmation. The Astros 2 has a three-person crew consisting of a commander, operator, and driver. The MLRS has a length of 8 meters, a width of 2.4 meters, and a height of 2.6 meters. Its combat weight is 20,000 kilograms. The 280 horsepower Mercedes OM422 diesel engine provides a road speed of up to 90 km per hour. Its range is 480 km. The Astros 2 can negotiate 2.3 meter trenches and can afford to a depth of 1.1 meters. During the Iran Iraq War, the Iraqi Astros 2s proved their combat value repeatedly. So, in the 1991 Gulf War, the Allied forces prioritized destroying the Iraqi Astros 2s. Also, Saudi Arabia used its Astros 2s against the Iraqi forces. But it was seen that a significant number of submunitions of the Astros 2 rockets fired by the Saudis failed to explode during the Battle of Hafshi. 
The Saudi army also used this MLRS in Yemen. Angola successfully deployed its Astros twos against the UNITA. The MLRS served its own country during anti-smuggling and anti-narcotic operation Agatha 10. Many assume that the modular Asteris 2 is in the same class as the HIMARS. It is true to some degree. To better understand the differences, we should look at the creation of the M270. Until the early 1970s, the USSR was the country that invested in artillery rockets the most. The Soviet army had two types of MLRS. The first had a relatively short range for frontline duties. The best example of this type, the low-cost BM-21, could send its rockets to a distance to 20 km, which was enough for the counter-battery missions against the short-range NATO artillery of the time. Also, the Grad was a perfect saturation weapon to destroy the enemy's strong points. The second type had a long range. The best example of this type, the expensive BM-27 Uragan, used cluster munitions to destroy the target behind the front line, such as air defense batteries, communication lines, depots, and rallying areas. When the USA returned to the artillery rocket business in the 1970s, the Army staff still considered an MLRS like the BM-21 invalid in the doctrines. The towed and self-propelled howitzers were better solutions than a Grad-type rocket artillery system. But a BM-27 type system offered many advantages. So, the M270 was designed with the same principles as the Uragan. Of course, the USA took a step further with the guided Atakams missiles with 300 km range. The M270 was never created to supplement the towed and self-propelled howitzers. It had a different job. The HIMARS is only a wheeled variant of the M270. On the other hand, Brasilia and the financer of the Astros 2 program Iraq had a different agenda. They wanted to have an M270 type artillery system, but they also needed a BM21 type MLRS. So, Astros 2 was designed as a hybrid and it combined the superior features of both types of MLRS. So, many countries which needed a hybrid system preferred the Astros 2. Total sales of this MLRS between 1982 and 1987 reached US$1 US dollars. The Asterisk II became the most profitable weapon system produced by Avibras. Until the 2000s, the Asterisk II was unrivaled in its class. Then Israel, Slovakia, Turkey and South Korea began to offer such systems. But these self-propelled artillery systems featured only better trucks, fire control systems, rockets and communication equipment. They never had an additional innovation. So, Avibras mounted the launcher on a better truck, integrated better electronics and developed new longer range GPS guided rockets. This way, the Astros 2 has kept the competition hot. Today, Spain is considering the acquisition of the Astros 2 after retiring its locally produced Terriels in 2011. Even the United Arab Emirates which recently added the HIMARS to its inventory, is still among the potential customers of this Brazilian MLRS. We may soon see the Astros 2 in Ukraine adding new pages to its saga. Some Brazilian sources claim Kyiv was interested in this MLRS in 2022, but the previous Bolsonaro administration rejected the possible sale. The USA is now trying to persuade the new Brazilian president, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, to unblock the deal. As you may see, the Asterisk 2 is one of the best in its class. Thanks to its successful modular design, it can continue to answer the demands of many different customers. That's why many countries are still considering acquiring this 40-year-old MLRS. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.